Hi YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and thanks for tuning into my channel. During this video, I'm gonna tell you my tips and tricks for participating in your own craft show. Regardless of what type of artesian you are, this video should be really helpful for helping you be the most successful at your next craft show. The first thing that I did when planning for this craft show was, of course, I applied to the show that I wanted to get in. I did some research on what this show was like, talked to some other vendors who had been there previously, and just did a little bit of snooping online to see what the traffic was going to be like and what the overall feel of the show was going to be. I wanted to make sure that it was a good fit for my business. Once I was accepted to the show, the next step for me was to make an inventory list of all of the things that I wanted to create to take to the show. I knew that this was a spring show, so of course I wasn't going to create Christmas inventory. So I wanted to think about what types of things people would be buying at this type of year. A lot of outdoor shopping happens at this time of year because people are starting to decorate more outside than inside. So I wanted to take that into consideration when planning my inventory. I made myself a huge list of all of the different creations I wanted to make and then narrowed it down to what I thought would be a good fit for this show. Once I had my inventory done, it was time for me to start thinking about what my setup was going to look like and how much was that going to cost me in addition to the materials of the inventory that I wanted to create. I knew how much I was hoping to make profit at the show, and so I wanted to make sure that my setup and my building materials together were going to stay in budget for what my goal was for the show. Here's a look at what some of the process of me getting ready for the show was. So I can't actually believe that there's only nine more days to have work done for the show. And my mom and I are going to be setting up a 10 by 10 space at this show. And she's going to be bringing her fiber art. So we'll have a lots of selection for home items that people can shop with, but I want to take as much inventory as I possibly can. So I actually worked myself straight out of every piece of wood that I had in the shop. So yesterday I took a trip to the city and loaded up the truck, got a whole bunch more wood. And then last night spent a couple of hours prepping cutting, sanding, and painting all of the backgrounds so they would be ready to do some more work today. So this is the state of my art room currently while I'm trying to prep for the show. We've been doing some shuffling around and trying to get as much prep done as we possibly can. And I can see I have all this wood ready and prep that I bought yesterday at Home Depot and then another whole pile in the garage. My to-do list for the day keeps growing as I think of all the things that I need to get done in only about a week's time. So what I'm going to be doing today is finish building and actually paint the payment station that I'm gonna show you later in the video. I'm building a quilt rack for mom, so I wanna get that finished being built and painted as well. I'm painting all of the payment station and the quilt rack white so that it can match the white shiplap walls that I created for the background. If you wanna check that out, you can see that on my channel. Just head over to my videos list and it's there. It's a DIY shiplap wall. And then what I'm going to do is all of the wood that you saw in the background previously in the video that isn't painted is going to get cut, prepped, and ready to put words on tomorrow. And all the signs you saw that have paint on them will all get words and their frames today. So I have a lot to do. And then in addition to that this week, I need to get my tags ready, get all of my stuff, um, like little signs that are gonna have my social media links and my business sign and a whole bunch of other things I'm prepping. So I'm going to show you kind of along the way through this week, sort of what I'm doing in this last week before the show. Okay, so I thought it was important to have a separate counter as a pay station in the location of our 10 by 10 booth. So what I've done is created two rectangular boxes that are almost four feet tall, and then I'm shiplapping around the sides and the front panel. And so this is obviously laying on its side because I'm building it right now. And then what I'm using for the top is this nice piece of smooth countertop. Once I get the rest of the shiplapping done on this, I'm going to paint it all white so that it goes along really well with the white shiplap walls I've created. I found this universal tablet headrest grip at the dollar store for $3 and I'm going to use it to mount my iPad at the show and it comes in a black and gray color and since my whole setup is white I'm spray painting it. I'm going to do several thin coats here so that it doesn't chip off. I'm spray painting it so that it'll be nice and white and just look like the rest of my display. Now that the pay station is upright here's a glimpse of what the shiplap looks like and what I'm doing right now is just installing a shelf on the inside that my cash box can go on. So I'm four days away from the show and today I have over 200 signs to frame, finishing up a few things that we need for the display and then I'm on my way to start getting my tags and the rest of my presentation ready. Behind the scenes at the Agriplex getting ready for the craft show. This building is absolutely massive. I'm going to take you on a little tour 
of what this space looks like and how I'm going to be setting up. So you can see there's just like aisles and aisles and aisles of spaces for vendors to set up. And they're still setting up some of the curtains and people are just arriving to start setting up. My booth's just straight through there. And then those more aisles all the way down. And then I think this is the entrance where people are going to be coming in. So I think I'm in a really nice spot for where my booth is. Because when people come in this store, my booth is going to be just right there. So here is our booth space. So I'm just starting to unload everything to bring it in so we can get set up for the show. This great big entrance here is where everyone's gonna come in in a couple of hours. And when you walk straight in, you can see all the vendors are just getting ready to prepare for the opening of the show. You head straight down this main aisle. My booth is just on the right hand side. Let's talk presentation. Presentation is everything at a show. It's your first impression when people come by your business. What I like to do is make all the things that I really want to stand out and pop in my booth, put them up front. That way they want to be brought into to see what I have behind the scenes. When thinking about your presentation, you want to be able to visually show people the function of your work. And so for me, I need to show people what a sign is going to look like hanging in their home. So I created some white shiplap walls to really showcase the bright colors and quality of the work that I'm using. If you are someone that maybe makes scarves, you want to make sure you have a beautiful mirror that people can see it in. Or if you're making jewelry, you want to wear your product and actually mirror what the image would look like if they bought it for themselves. Also make sure that visually you have some different depths in your booth. If you just have all the products that you've created just laid out on a flat table visually, that doesn't stimulate people when they come by the booth. You wanna make sure that maybe you have a few things in little baskets, a few things hanging up, and have some multi-level dimension to your space so that it really intrigues people to see what you have in there. If you're using tables that require a tablecloth, you wanna make sure that your tablecloths go right to the ground and that you don't have any extra fluff in your booth. You wanna make sure that all the things that aren't actually used to display your products, everything else you wanna have tucked away where people can't visually see it at all. You don't wanna take away from the beautiful work that you've worked really hard to show people. The other tip I have for presentation is not to overwhelm people with too much stuff. It's really nice to have a variety of things, but having too much stuff can actually be overstimulating for the shopper. Some people have a really hard time making decisions, and so giving them too many decisions will really confuse them, and that might make them hesitate to buy. It's like going to a restaurant where the menu is so big that you can't possibly choose what you might wanna eat. Let's talk pricing. Pricing is something that is so important in your space. Imagine going to your favorite store and there wasn't a price tag on anything. It would take you so much time to go find someone that worked there that maybe is busy with other customers, bring them over and ask them how much an item is. It doesn't make for a very enjoyable shopping experience. Most people know how much money they have to spend and they wanna know that they can look for items that are in the budget that they're hoping to spend that day. So having price tags on every item in your booth is definitely going to help you boost sales. When pricing your items, you want to make sure that you have items that are in different price ranges. That way it's friendly for any type of shopper that visits your booth. The other suggestion that I have is to make sure that all of your price tags are very clear and easy to access. That way people don't have to manipulate and move your items around to find the tags. Relating to pricing is actually what payment methods you accept in your booth. 95% of my transactions at my recent craft show were using a credit card. You wanna make sure that you have the credit card option available so you don't lose out on sales. Interacting with customers. My number one tip for growing your business at a craft show is to converse with people that come into your booth. Don't be on your phone, don't have your head behind your payment station, don't have a muffin in your mouth. Walk around, talk to the people and build a rapport with the clients that are coming into your booth. Think about the future. Don't just think about the sales you might make at this craft show, but think about how you can spread the news about your business so they might actually contact you in the future. Tell them about an event you have coming up. Tell them something unique about your business that makes you unique. 
Tell them something that they can contact you with later, like giving them a business card. There's so many things that you can do to help yourself in the future, right now in the present at your craft show. Interacting with customers isn't always easy. You're going to hear some pros and some cons about your business. And sometimes you don't really wanna hear it. Have you heard that saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all? Yeah, not everybody follows that saying. And so you might hear things that you don't wanna hear when it comes to your business. My tip for that is to kill them with kindness, always choose kind, brush it off, stay positive, and move on with your day. Let's talk branding. Branding is something that you can use that will help people remember your business and help you stand out. You wanna think about your branding when it comes to your business sign in your booth. You want it to be nice and clear so people will know the name of your business so they can find you later, maybe on social media. You also wanna make sure that you have business cards that have your contact information and maybe even a sign that has all of your social media icons so they know that they can contact you in many different ways. Even if you're not the host of the event, you wanna be able to market your handmade business so people know that you're going to be at the event. What I like to do is pin a calendar to the top of my business page that shows people what events I'm participating in that year. It lists the dates, times, and locations of where they can come and see my products in person. Not everyone likes to order online. They like to actually see a tangible product in their hand to make a decision if they're going to buy or not. This lets people know where I'm gonna be. Using your social media to market your craft show is also a great opportunity to post if you're gonna have a sale at your craft show or if you're gonna launch a new product. Marketing and giving a little bit of push or incentive for why people might wanna come see your booth is a great way to get more people into your space. Now that I've participated in my first really big craft show that had a lot of traffic, there's a few things that I learned. So I thought that it would be great for me to share that with you to help you succeed at your craft show. The first thing I learned is that more traffic doesn't always generate more sales. I actually found at this craft show that it was so busy that people couldn't get in and out of people's booths. It didn't matter how the booths were set up. There was just so much traffic shoulder to shoulder that people were having a really hard time getting in and out and actually looking at items. I've actually been just as successful at some of my smaller shows as I was at this bigger event, even though it cost me more to attend this event as well as more to prepare for this event. So I'm gonna take that into consideration when planning my next events. The next thing I learned is that spring shows versus Christmas shows is a really big difference. At this time of year, people are shopping for themselves, maybe for outdoor spaces, but they don't have a list of people that they need to shop for like at a Christmas sale. So I knew for sure that my spring sales would probably generate a lot lower than the Christmas shows that I participated in. This is the first time that I've done a show in spring, so just be aware that spring shows may or may not be as profitable as a Christmas show. It was really important for me that I launched a whole bunch of new designs at this event. I took a little over 250 new designs to my show. I did learn, however, that too many choices can be a little bit overwhelming for people, and maybe next time it might be better for me to have a few duplicates of a few of my favorites rather than 250 different designs. I pride myself in being very flexible when it comes to the pros and cons of running a handmade business. But something happened at my craft show this weekend that was completely unplanned for and completely unexpected and something that I could have never even imagined happened. It actually started raining in my booth. There was a huge roof leak just above my booth. About three or four spaces in this event out of 200 vendors had rainfall coming in the ceiling. And so for the first night, I actually had garbage pails and recycling bins lined up along one third of the front side of my booth to collect water. So something that I didn't plan on and I needed to just brush it off, move on with the night, make the best of it, and just roll with the punches. Some tips that I have for the actual days of the show is to make sure that you pack your own food and drinks. You don't wanna be doing any unnecessary spending the day of, and you wanna make sure that you're fueled for the whole day because it's a really long time to be standing on your feet and you wanna make sure that you have everything you need right at your location so you never have to leave your booth. I made sure that my payment box was actually bolted down to the back of my payment station that had a lock on it. That way I couldn't have any unnecessary thievery happening in my booth if I had my back turned. For every craft show that I'm in, I make sure that I take a little emergency toolkit with me. I take a whole bunch of different tools and stationary things. I make sure I have band-aids and Tylenol and just anything extra that I think that could come up because you just never know what's gonna be around the corner when you've never set up at that location before. Another great tip since you're gonna have a really long day or even days at your craft show is to have some food prepared so when you get home, you don't have to do any cooking before you head to bed for a good night's rest. If you have any other tips and tricks to help people with their craft shows, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share with someone that you think would enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see future videos.